typically when you share your slides on Zoom, you're stuck in this tiny little rectangle on the right side. And although participants can easily adjust the size of the speaker versus the slides by just dragging this in side by side mode, wouldn't it be great if you as the speaker could really wow your audience by doing something like this, where you're in your slides and you're actually on here and you can in real time resize yourself, move yourself around on the screen. Uh, over a year ago, actually quite a long time ago, Zoom introduced to add your slides as virtual backgrounds behind you. And it really helps you stand out from the rest because I have not seen a lot of people, speakers, presenters doing this yet. And you can use it with a green screen, without a green screen. Like I said, you can resize yourself so you're not covering any important text in real time. And the most important thing, you won't easily lose connection with your audience because now they can pay attention to the important things on your slides. They can still see your gestures, your facial reactions, and stay more connected with you. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to set this up correctly. But uh, you really want to make sure you watch until the end because I'm also going to tell you about some of those really important things to watch out, pitfalls. Um, you really want to know this if you're planning to use this in a paid speaking engagement. All right. My name is Jan Keck and my mission is to help people feel less alone. And right now I do this by teaching facilitators, trainers, course creators, people like you, how they can design more inclusive, engaging and memorable and meaningful virtual experiences. Uh, Zoom is one of my go to tools that I use every single day. So if you're interested to learn how I use Zoom in my workshops, make sure you're subscribed um, over here, make sure you're subscribed. And uh, let's jump right into the tutorial part of this video. So I'll show you exactly how you can add your slides to your Zoom meeting as a virtual background behind you. So to start, you'll find the share screen button down here. We'll click that. That usually shows you the basic tab on the top. If you flip to the advanced tab, this is where a lot of the cool things are hidden. Like the slides as virtual background is the top left one here. Actually, give me one second. Let me jump over here so you can still see me and stay connected to me a little bit. Um, it says beta, but it has been in beta for over a year and it's been working pretty well for me. So I'll show you exactly how to use it. Once we open this up, uh, it asks you to choose your presentation file. So the two apps that work with this are PowerPoint and Keynote. Um, I'm going to open this one up that I have created in Keynote. And I'll also start a little timer, a little stopwatch, because it sometimes takes a little bit of time to open up the file depending on how large it is. So let's actually check how long will it take for this to open up? Okay, we're at five seconds, six seconds. This is a simple presentation with maybe 20 slides, a bunch of pictures. There we go. It was about 12 seconds. So in 12 seconds, now we are here. Let me take this off. So now you can see I am in this little window down here and I can move myself around wherever I want to be. And um, let me make myself a little bit bigger here. Actually, one thing I need to quickly turn off here, as you can see, there is a, it didn't take out that um, that bookcase over here. And I'll explain to you in a second why. Let me go to video settings, um, 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 backgrounds and effects and just take out the green screen here. So this is what usually you, you would see. Um, so you just have yourself, you can move yourself around, you can make yourself larger. Let's see, this is the biggest I can probably do. Um, and now I am basically just in front of my slides there in the background. I can move myself around a little bit. Um, there are a couple of notes down here. Just below me, I have these arrows that I can adjust or move the slides forward and back. I can also use the keys on my keyboard. 
if I have um, the zoom window in focus. And there is another thing down here. Actually, let me point my finger and move my finger right there is these three little dots. And I have two options here. I know this is a little bit small, so I'll tell you what they say. Resize my window. So this just brings up those um, this thing and then split video from files. So what happens here is now I'm just sharing my slides kind of like you are used to. I'm in this top window up here. The slides are just by themselves. If I want to merge my video and slides again, I click that again. And now I'm again on top of my slides. So this is basically how it works. Pretty simple. But uh, as you might have seen on my next slide, there are a couple of really important things that we need to pay attention to because this doesn't always work the way we want or um, <clears throat> you really need to prepare your slides for this. So let's start with the first challenge, the first thing to keep in mind, which is you really need to redesign your slides. As you can see right now, if this is where I would be, I would be covering the text of my slide. So for this slide, I might make myself smaller and put myself over here. Um, for the next slide, now my text is on this side and I'm like, well, so I guess I'm going to put myself down here. If you don't want to do this every single time you change your slides and change where your video is going to be, then you really need to start from scratch and you need to redesign your slides. So there's always some space, let's say in the bottom right corner where you are not covering any text. Uh, the other thing that you might have noticed is I can't move this window outside. I can't go further right. Although there's nothing on this side, I can't crop this video. So I'm a little bit limited to where I put this. Um, but of course, you can have a lot of fun and putting it in different places on different slides. I could be sitting up here, for example, and chatting from here. I could put myself actually this is me right here. I could replace myself and put myself here. So you can have lots of fun with it. But if you're using it um, for a professional sense where you have slides, highly recommend redesigning your slides with that in mind. Number two is ideally you want to create a new slide for each animation. And what I mean by that is for example, let me actually move on to the next slide. This is a slide that I designed in Keynote that has all of these words on that slide kind of moving towards the speaker and they're coming in one at a time. But when you use slides as virtual background, none of the animations, uh, sounds, transitions actually get imported. It basically takes your Keynote or PowerPoint and thinks it's a PDF with static slides. So if you have text that you want to appear one by one, you basically want to create a new slide each time you add text. So if you have a bunch of bullet points, make sure that you have a new slide for each new bullet point that shows up. So that way you can kind of mimic that animation effect. It's not going to slowly dissolve. It's just going to appear. But at least you're not going to have the whole text like here um, behind you right away. Number three to keep in mind, create a new file for each section. Okay, this one takes a little bit of explanation. And that's actually one of my biggest um, pet peeves about using slides as virtual backgrounds. If I want to not just unmerge my video, but actually stop sharing the slides for a moment, because I want to be let's say in gallery view, I want to see everyone. Um, I want to be really large and not have text behind me, then usually what you would do is you would say, OK, I'm going to stop sharing slides. Now I'm nice and big. People can see me. I can connect with them. And then I want to go back to that presentation where I left off. So let's try that. Let's go again. Share screen. Slides as virtual background. Select this. And as you can see, we have to wait again, number one, 
uh, these 13 seconds or whatever it took for this first presentation to open up. And then the other thing that happens is we basically start from slide one. So now I would have to go and say like, okay, where was I? Let me go back. Okay, uh, this is where I was. Where did I need to put this video? Here we go, right? Seems like a lot of work. So one way around this is to, uh, instead of having one presentation file that you always have to reload, you could have several ones for each section. So let's say the first 10 minutes of the presentation, then you have your breakout room activity, your gallery view, you stop sharing, and then the next time you load the next presentation. And maybe by having these smaller files, it will also be a little bit faster to load, but still the process is not really that smooth. So just keep that in mind when you're planning to use this feature. Number four, <clears throat> make sure your computer can handle it and what I mean by that is actually looking at the Zoom website and the requirements for virtual backgrounds. If your computer cannot handle virtual backgrounds, you won't be able to use uh, your slides as virtual background. So there is a website that will link in the comments where you can check exactly, okay, what, um, what kind of Zoom client do you need? What type of um, operating system do you need for Mac, for Windows? All of that information will be on that page. And uh, the one thing to keep in mind as well is, oh, hold on, I wanna be over here. Um, the other thing you wanna keep in mind is if you as the presenter have the capability to display slides as virtual backgrounds, there might be a chance that your participants have a lower Zoom version. And I think at the moment it's actually 5.2.0 that they will need to also see this behind them because if they don't have that version, they will just see the slides as a normal screen and then see basically the same way it looked before if I went to split video from slides, they would see the um, slides below and then the speaker in the little window the same way it was before. Um, the other thing, <clears throat> if you are wondering, oh, why does this no, no, not work on my Zoom or on my computer, there is a setting on the Zoom website that you want to make sure you have enabled, which is uh, the virtual backgrounds to even see this as an option in your sharing menu. So if you don't see it, make sure to check the, the Zoom website settings. Um, all right, I think I have one more point. Let's see which one did we go. Make sure your computer can handle it and use a green screen. And here is why using a green screen is a good idea. Of course, virtual backgrounds work pretty well on Zoom um, if you have not much going on in your background, but if you have a lot of details, it might not know where to crop it. Sometimes my hat gets uh, cropped and this part goes completely missing. So I actually prefer using a green screen and you might not even have noticed that I've been using a green screen the whole time. This is actually how I can put some text behind me um, because what you see behind me here is actually a picture of my real background. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, I have a green screen behind me. So if I remove this green screen now, this is what it would look like if I didn't have a green screen. Still pretty good, but you can see at the corners of my hat, even like between my fingers, it doesn't show up as much. And I'll show you the difference um, if I take this off. There we go. This is how my background actually looks like. And if I bring that back up, here are my slides again. And like I said, I can move myself around here. I could make myself smaller. Okay, now I'm actually confusing Zoom. I need to put my, uh, my bookcase back here. Um, so this is how you use slides as a virtual background. There's lots of fun things you can do. And if you are interested in learning how to do little magic tricks like this, 
by taking photos of your actual office behind you. Now I'm back in Toronto where I used to live until a few months ago in my old office, then make sure you check out the video that I'll link up here.